We have Dirk Dunbar, and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say because your topic was a little bit different um, from fair food, but we'll see how you can tie it in. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. You're right, it's all over the place. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Kathy. Awesome. Happy Earth Day. <laughs> um, I'll try not to depress you too much. We suffer from dysfunctional environmental relations. Many of the norms we have a civilization have established and our relationship to nature is nothing short of insane. The signs are everywhere. From air and water pollution, deforestation, and global warming to our unhealthy diets and lack of environmental justice. These signs attest to our ecocidal addiction, pathological consumerism, planetary autism, and collective amnesia. Shout out to Annabelle, my daughter and activist. Climate change is a clear example of our addiction. Despite proof that our use of fossil fuels adds to climate change, we continue to use them at constantly alarming rate. The continued use of, for instance, toxic pesticides, plastic grocery bags, and aerosol cans are obvious signs of a widespread denial of the environmental crisis which in itself is a symptom of an addiction to an unsustainable way of life. This addiction owes in part to the agendas of transnational corporations and the advertisement industry that assaults us daily with the most oppressive psychological warfare system ever created. Amidst thousands of related facts, the following few attest that the meat industry is one of the clearest indicators of our addiction and consumption maladies. One, the corporate raising, slaughter, and consumption of pigs, chicken, and cattle is inhumane, as has been attested here today. Two, eating too much meat is a clear factor in epidemic rates of heart disease, strokes, and cancer. Of course, it raises all of the health care costs. Three, animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of water pollution, habitat destruction, ocean dead zones, and animal extinction. Four, the nearly 2 billion cattle on the planet take up 33% of the land mass, eat enough grain to feed hundreds of millions of people, release 150 billion gallon, gallons of methane gas daily, which accounts for 51% of the greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. Five, 56% of the water consumed in the U.S. is used to grow crops for livestock. Six, over three million children starve to death annually. And three billion people worldwide are malnourished while obesity in the U.S. continues at epidemic rates. Seven, one acre of land can produce 20,000 pounds of potatoes compared to 165 pounds of meat. And one pound of grain makes one pound of bread, while one pound of beef necessitates over 10 pounds of grain. Our addiction to and consumption pathologies related to meat production are only a few of many signs of the values that regarding diet, health, and justice which need to be reconsidered. Our dysfunctional environmental relations are built into the core of Western values. We have made ourselves lords and masters over nature. From the dictate given by our Father in Heaven in Genesis, we have been given dominion over all the earth for animals included. Plato and Aristotle agreed that humans are the only creatures that possess the divinely ordained logos, or human reason, and that animals are solely here for our purposes. The patriarchal nature of divine and human powers is the source behind so many of our hierarchies, such as the great chain of being, manifest destiny, and white man's burden. Man is below God on the great chain, but above women who are above animals. The view of animals is epitomized by Descartes, who claimed they are little machines and that they did not feel, which is why he practiced and promoted live vivisection. Nature was regarded as the realm of the devil, and the body and instincts imprison the soul and need to be overcome by obeying patriarchal dogma associated with sin, guilt, and fear of eternal damnation. A backlash to evangelical theology is a strictly scientific view of the world. Augmented by existentialism and reductionism, the modern and postmodern minds share the skepticism and fragmentation of an age that is, as Carl Jung put it, 
in search of a soul. As Logos was morphed into the logic of science, an alarming repercussion has been the growing assumptions that we are part of a universal fluke. Nature is senselessly brutal and life evolves randomly, which explains a further loss of our identity with Earth. Not only do we suffer collectively from starvation and obesity, drug addictions to heart attacks, and dead rivers to nuclear weapons, but we have also made science and technology weapons against nature, using them as value-free instruments of progress, even when much of the progress is unhealthy. Without question, an ecocentric future depends on a reconsideration of control, dominion, and progress. The result of the religious and scientific deliberation of nature, eco-psychologists agree, has been the creation of a split self, alienated from nature due to planetary autism and collective amnesia. Like autistic children who do not seem to sense their mother's presence, we have lost touch to the sacred presence of the living planet and the voices and stories, stories that nourished our ancestors in pre-industrial societies. Similarly, our collective amnesia represents a lost connection to, as Ralph Metzner affirms, quote, something our ancestors once knew and practiced. Certain attitudes and kinds of perception, an ability to empathize and identify with non-human life, respect for the mysterious, and humility in relationship to the infinite complexities of the natural world. In short, our dysfunctional environmental relations have caused a lost connection to other animals and e ecosystems, to Mother Earth and all her archetypes, and to a primal awareness that has guided the human journey for millennia. I believe that many of the solutions to our current crises are before us and are being put into practice. The fact that we are here celebrating Earth Day together is a clear sign of a, re revelation, a revolution that has been initiated by the 1960s. The Civil Rights Movement gave rise to an egalitarian awareness that led to movements involving the rights of women, free speech, animals, and the planet as a whole. This movement created a philosophy or worldview that I describe as ecocentrism which calls for an, and honors nature, seeks sustainability, and pursues egalitarian relations between humans and other species. Along with the rise of deep ecology, ecofeminism, and green politics, ecocentrism promotes holistic health, which involves an integration of physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. This sense of well-being includes the awareness that if anyone is afflicted, then we are all afflicted the impoverished, the challenged, and other animals. In other words, a primary aim of ecocentrism is to awaken our local and global connectedness while shedding our planetary autism and reviving our communication with Earth and her inhabitants. By reactivating our ability to communicate with the more than human world, we also shed our collective amnesia. We realize, as Black Elk, Chief Seattle and Indians have for, affirmed for millennia, other animals are our brothers and sisters. Three of the most practical ecocentric changes that we can make collectively is to alter what we and urban industrial nations eat and how to disperse food to the less fortunate. Cultivate ways to improve physical, mental, and spiritual health while healing our environment, environmental relations and redefine sanity and justice with the whole world in mind. Animals must be a priority, beginning with honoring their intrinsic value and the right to have a meaningful life. We need to eat lower on the food chain and realize that commercials such as Where's the Beef and Eat More Chicken are part of a pathological industry that cares for neither humans nor animals. Also, we need to find ways to feed the poor on a global scale. Starvation needs to be seen for what it is, a clear sign of first world insanity. By redefining sanity with the whole world in mind, we can move from a justice system that is based on legal authorities and reward and punishment to one, as ecofeminists have been describing for decades, of care. In sum, ecocentrism has invaded our lives because it has to. Arising from the ecological unconscious, 
we are being summoned to a task that is vital to our and many other species' survival. Individual and planetary health depends on our ability to mend the separation of body and soul propagated by Greek and Abrahamic traditions and to overcome scientism's objectification of nature that stems from the contrived belief that we are evolutionary apparitions. By redefining sanity with earth and mind, ecocentrism expands the psyche's purview behind the health of the person, family, and society to include other animals, ecosystems, and the planet as a whole. As Bill Duvall and George Sessions conclude, quote, we believe that we may not need something new, but need to reawaken something very old, to reawaken our understanding of earth wisdom. In the broadest sense, we need to accept the invitation to the dance, the dance of unity of humans, plants, animals, the earth. We need to cultivate an ecological unconscious. And we believe a way out of our present predicament may be simpler than many people realize. Happy Earth Day, and thanks for having me here. I'd like to invite you all to, uh, if you have any questions, I'd like to invite you all to ask before I ha answer, ask my questions. Um, I have several for, for you all, um, but if anyone would like to ask a question first, feel free to go ahead. All right, I'll start. Don. <laughs> um, so, I really enjoyed hearing, um, I, I always enjoy hearing you, um, about everything um, from our food choices um, to how our uh, how our food choices affect. Um, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. I'll just ask you the question. Um, I was thinking.